So let's look at the 5 gigahertz base deployment and the amount of channels that we can have in a 5 gigahertz uh, frequency band. There's um, four different bands that we are currently using, uh, Uni1, Uni2, Uni2 Extended, and then we have Uni3, which is available in the US and in some of the European countries as well. And the difference between having Uni3 or not having Uni3 also means the difference between having 19 or 23 different um, non-overlapping channels. What we mean when we say channel reuse is how how much leverage or how much channels do we have available before the same channels pops up again. So if you look at the slide, you'll see uh, Uni1, Uni2, Uni2 extended channels that we have available. And you will see a design pattern where the channel 36, when you deploy your access point, doesn't repeat for a very long time. So this is channel reuse, and this channel reuse scheme uh, means that we have a lot of flexibility in terms of how many APs we deploy, where do we deploy them, before we introduce CCI or co-channel interference. So we would have channel interference if the access point on channel 36 could hear the other access point on channel 36, but you can see that the spacing between them is actually quite extensive, so there's a minimal chance of that happening unless we mess up our design. That's why the 5 gigahertz frequency band makes it easier to deploy high-performing or capacity-based networks um, when you compare it to 2.4 where you only have three or four non-overlapping channels and the channel reuse scheme is actually quite limiting to the way we can deploy our networks. So that's why when you, whenever you talk about high-density, high-capacity networks, we are talking about 5 gigahertz frequency band. How do we make sure that those two access points on channel 36 don't hear each other. Well, there's going to be a big difference if this is a deployment in an open door environment. Uh, think, about, think about a desert, for example. If you deploy access points in the desert, the signal travels for a long distance. And there's a bigger chance that two access points will hear each other compared to indoor environment where some of the signal is going to be absorbed by the materials of the building itself. So, to control CCI, you use your environment to block the signal and contain the signal within a smaller space. The different materials will block or absorb the Wi-Fi signals differently. For example, a dry wall will absorb a minimum amount of the signal, whereas a poured concrete wall will probably block most of it out. Uh, and that's why we do site surveys. We try to determine how much signal is blocked by the environment and how to deploy access points, where to deploy access points, in order to uh, use our frequency band the best way possible and to reduce CCI. And reducing the CCI, or cultural interference, means we can deploy more devices and those devices can use the Wi-Fi in the best way possible. An example that you have on the screen is a 1AP per room design. So, so this is a school environment where we deploy one access point for every room. And what you see is a 5 gigahertz channel reuse scheme. And if we study the design a little more closer, we see that the channel 36 or any other of the channels actually don't pop up when you go from left to right for quite um, quite extensive amount of time. Or you see channel 36 on the upper right, and then you don't see it repeat until the, one of the middle classrooms. And this, together with all the walls and all the materials in between those two access points, mitigates CCI or reduces CCI altogether. Um, so using wall attenuation, using materials is a good way to mitigate CCI. Uh, if we deploy these access points in the hole, this would be a completely different story because there would be no environmental barriers to block out these um, RF signals and to block out and reduce CCI. This is an example of how to maximize channel reuse. Deploying access points where there's no attenuation between them, where there's nothing to block the signal from traveling further, is normally a bad idea if you're deploying a high-density environment. So 
we take the same school environment, we deploy two access points in the hallway, and immediately we see that we have channel overlap. And we immediately hit the limitation of uh, the half duplex medium, one talks, the other listens. We've basically split the capacity of this network in half just by deploying access points in this way. This is without even connecting any clients. As we deploy clients to this network, the problem gets compounded and the performance just drastically uh, drops. And obviously this is not going to be a well-performing network. Um, it doesn't provide adequate coverage to the rooms either. And what's all pro probably also going to happen is the radio resource management protocols are going to determine that there's too much overlap. They will try to minimize the impact of th that overlap. They will drop down the power of the APs automatically, further reducing the reach to each of the rooms. So this is, a, this is an example of a poorly designed network uh, and probably comes because lack of uh, domain knowledge or Wi-Fi knowledge of uh, the person deploying it. If we go back to one AP per room design, what we can do is, so normally we have dual radio access points and in order to maximize the use of resources, we can either um, turn some of the 2.4 radios off because the 2.4 design is actually gonna look pretty horrible if we have one AP per room due to the uh, three or four channels available on that frequency spectrum. Um, when you're doing a design like this, there's a couple of considerations. Obviously, you don't want your access points to be on maximum power. That will reduce CCI. Um, you need to do a site survey to determine how much signal is actually blocked by the material, by the walls, by the doors, and also try to avoid channel bonding. Uh, because channel bonding will reduce the amount of channels that you have, well, by half. If you bond 20 to 40, you have half the channels you had before. If you bond from 40 to 80, that further reduces the amount of channels. And another thing that happens when you use channel bonding is you in actually increase the, uh, re the sensitivity to the noise floor. So you actually reduce signal-to-noise ratio uh, by a factor of 3 decibel, which is quite a lot. If we look at the one AP per room design that we have, solely from a 2.4 gigahertz perspective, we'll see that if you want to design that in a way where you would minimize CCI, not every access point can be used. Uh, not every 2.4 radio can be used. Um, you either power those radios off or give them very low power. Um, or you deploy dual 5 gigahertz access points where you convert some of these radios into 5 gigahertz radios, thus maximizing your investment. If we look at free access points deployed in this classroom scenario, all those access points running on channel 1 and on low power, we would still have some CCI and we would in no means be able to uh, provide good service to the devices on that floor. So, instead, we deploy 5 GHz on all of the access points, and if the access points are capable of dual 5 GHz, every third radio is converted to a 5 GHz radio, or if it's not a dual 5 GHz radio, every third radio is turned off. The dual 5 GHz wireless LAN design leverages the fact that we have software selectable radios on the APs. And the design can either be done manually or you can let the system figure it out its, on its own and leverage something we call SDR profiles, whereas the process uh, called ACSP, Auto Channel and Power Selection Protocol, will, fi will figure out not only which channel to use, how much power to use, but also which frequency band to operate in. And it's going to dynamically assign the, that software selectable radio to either 2.4 or 5 gigahertz frequency band. And that will create a um, automatic switch between 2.4 to 5 gigahertz. And obviously you need to have access points that have this capability, um, but this means that a dual radio AP can either offer 2.4 or 5 gigahertz services depending on what's required in that environment.